Good evening, everyone. Today we have Miss Meena Desai, the guest speaker, Associate Dean, ISMW, School of Management and Entrepreneurship. We have Miss Achal, Mr. Sandeepan Reddy, the chairman of the school, Mr. Tushar Joshi, the coordinator of the school, and our little host, Master Kanaya Gutte and Akshat Chokra. So today I am welcoming you all on the fourth session of Synergy Talks 2020. Over to you, Kanaya. Yes, ma'am. A very warm evening to one and all. Myself, Mr. Kanaya Aruragute, studying in grade 8 at Synergy National School, Ambezugai. Our school has organized this webinar based on career exploration to motivate our, uh, to motivate our students, that is Synergy Talk. <clears throat> Honorable Chairman Sir Mr. Sandeepan Reddy, Honorable Principal Man Mrs. Bhavika Shah, Respected Coordinator Sir Mr. Tushar Joshi, all the supporting teachers and my dear friends and even the prestigious people who are live with us. I am profusely overjoyed to take the opportunity to introduce our Chief Guest of today's Synergy Talk. She is none, on the, none other than Ms. Meena Desai. Mrs. Meena Desai is an Associate Dean of Indian School of Management and Entrepreneurship Mumbai, one of the number one PGDM college of the current era. Besides this, she has a teaching experience of over 15 years. She is widely loved by her students and is a passionate teacher at heart. Her firm belief in action-based learning has ensured that all the theoretical concepts are reinforced in a practical manner within the college ecosystem. Her areas of interest include business management, human resource management, marketing, organizational behavior, and entrepreneurship. In 2016, she was awarded the Emerging Woman Leader by the Higher Education Forum and in 2006 was awarded the Promising Young Faculty by HR College of Commerce and Economics. She has been the recipient of a fully paid capacity building scholarship for a Master's in Human Resource Management at the University of Westminster, London, 2007-8. She also holds a postgraduate diploma in Education Management from NMIMS University, Mumbai. Currently, she is pursuing her PhD from the University of Mumbai in the area of her corporate social responsibility. Having realized the importance of initiating school students to the commerce stream of collegiate education, she spearheaded a citywide career counseling fair called the Class of 2017, which impacted over 1,000 students from Mumbai. Over the last decade, she has played an integral role in several global immersion visit such as the Sheriff of Mumbai's delegation to UK 2008, NYU Stern Business School New York 2010, Stanford University's Global Leaders Program 2015, Babson College USA Symposium for Entrepreneurship Educators, Harvard Business School, MIT Medical, Media Labs, Japan, Singapore, etc. as well as many domestic delegations. She was even a full-time faculty and coordinator of the unaided program at prestigious HR College of Commerce and Economics, Mumbai. She juggles her role as a faculty and that of a mother to her twin girls and a homemaker with equal joy and enthusiasm. So ma'am, I request you to please guide our students on career explorations. Thank you. Thank you, Kanaya. Uh, this was by far one of the sweetest introductions that uh, I have, uh, you know, uh, had witnessed in, uh, so far. And it really does motivate me to uh, come here and uh, address all you wonderful students. Uh, at the onset, I must thank uh, Mr. Reddy and uh, Bhavika ma'am and of course the team uh, to invite me for this session. Uh, it was really wonderful a few months ago uh, when the world was a different normal. Uh, Sandeep and Sir had visited our campus and uh, we had an interaction and we decided that uh, at some point I would uh, visit your schools in person. But we all know what it is like right now. But uh, it's amazing how technology has uh, completely, completely enabled and of course taken over our lives to ensure that uh, this commitment of addressing your students as well as interacting with them uh, stands. And I'm so glad that we're able to do this through the virtual platform. My presentation today is uh, you know, a, a generic overview. I understand y'all are uh, you know, young students 
who are uh, fr uh, ranging from grade nine uh, onwards, and uh, you are looking at um, opportunities to decide various career opportunities ahead. Uh, let me also first start with a little personal story. So, of course, what Kanaya uh, shared is my educational background. Uh, I uh, started out as a BCom student at the very prestigious Mumbai's HR College. Uh, you know, back in the years, and I'm not telling you how many years ago, uh, there were three check boxes. If you were uh, an outstanding academic student, you were uh, you know, pursued to go and do science. Uh, if you were uh, um, you know, a mid-level student, you would then of course do commerce. And uh, those of you who then had uh, interests in uh, writing and literature and so on, would then be uh, encouraged to do arts. Unlike what you are and you are millennials, you, uh, we didn't have so many options to look at uh, opportunities uh, like you have today. The world has opened up and how, uh, you know, it's uh, also very important that we uh, look at options beyond the ordinary and the traditional uh, courses of science, commerce and arts, uh, because career opportunities and the, and the lines that exist have kind of, uh, you know, very beautifully woven in between. And uh, we're looking at an integration and a multidisciplinary learning approach, which is what the world has moved towards, uh, which is where uh, today's topic, which we chose for you all is careers of the 21st century. You're all young adults of the, of the 21st century, and you are going to be looking at uh, beyond the ordinary. Uh, if I may say so, we're all also uh, being a part of very, un very different times, you know, which are, uh, which are very unique. Uh, you probably are reading a lot on uh, a term that is being used on the television, maybe with your parents or in the newspapers or even online, what you're reading is this term called the new normal. So uh, as part of this new normal, uh, the career opportunities and the skills that you need to focus on have also really undergone a change. So let's first take a look at what's happening. I'm not going to make this depressing. We'll go to the next slide. And uh, there's a lot of talk on TV, on WhatsApp, what we call the WhatsApp University today. You're getting a lot of information. Yes, COVID-19, it's a pandemic, which has been declared by WHO and has hit the world. It's hit the world to that level that it has brought the world to a standstill. I don't think uh, they have even realized, uh, you know, that something to this level would come around. There are, of course, economic, uh, you know, ramifications of this pandemic. There are uh, social, physical, emotional uh, ramifications. And it has completely, completely, uh, you know, taken on the world. Uh, and Let's take a look at what happened or what's happening in India. Uh, this is, of course, uh, you know, an ongoing counter that we are sitting on. Um, I'm so glad to hear from your principal that uh, at least you students who are from, uh, you know, uh, Latur, Bid and the districts around are safe and uh, have had uh, less, uh, you know, impact because of COVID. Where we are in Bombay, we're all in uh, Mumbai. Sorry, we're all in uh, different, uh, you know, uh, sitting on hotbeds and hotspots of uh, the, uh, the pandemic and the COVID cases. So, um, you know, it's almost 60 days and counting and we are all, all locked in into our homes. And uh, this is something which has brought about changes in the form of the way we work, uh, we've got a lot of work from home. I'm taking lectures online. I am uh, doing uh, my admissions online for my institution. Uh, you know, uh, Ms. Achal, who's also my colleague, she has very successfully launched an online summer school today. So we've really changed the way we deal. And yes, in the evening, we play Ludo online and we uh, you know, have our Zoom birthday parties and uh, for the children and uh, whatever the new, uh, you know, the new ways of interacting and staying connected have come around. Uh, what's also changed is the 
uh, the world outside in the form of the animal kingdom. Um, so last summer, I remember taking my children to the zoo uh, in Mumbai and we had animals that were caged and that's where they saw the monkeys and, you know, and the peacocks and what have you. Uh, but here we are, uh, thanks to uh, the, um, you know, human beings locked in into the household, we've got uh, this interesting picture where you see the peacock that's out there on the car and of course the monkeys who have taken over as well. And that is how uh, the, uh, the world has really responded for the animals. It's the best time for them to be out there and uh, roam around and reclaim their, their land or their uh, space, which we have uh, very, very selfishly uh, intruded in most cases. Uh, for us as a country, it is, uh, yes, it's been uh, very challenging, but I think uh, with Good, in, good intent of the leaders, of our political leaders. We have managed to really, really, uh, you know, keep ourselves together, uh, whether it was uh, the activities that our prime minister brought in and we all did, uh, you know, very enthusiastically participate, whether it is the lockdown, uh, you know, the instructions that the state governments have given out for each, uh, you know, each city or the state that we are belonging to. There's been a lot of uh, good opportunities in there. And there's a lot of hope uh, in however difficult times these could be that we are somewhere placed to take up the top five position in the world by in the next decade or so. Yes, we started this decade with a lot of hope as well. But you know that India is supporting uh, the other countries too with its support for, uh, you know, to deal with the pandemic. And of course, going forward, we are hopeful that this would open up great opportunities of business for, uh, for our country as well, because uh, we have, uh, you know, the, uh, the other neighboring nations uh, from where this virus has come about also being a little bit under, under the fire uh, for uh, trade and, uh, you know, and uh, interactions with them. What does it mean for us? Uh, as a country, at India, we are a young population, okay? And these are uh, stats as of uh, 2020. Uh, the average age of the youth in our country is about 29 years. Vis-a-vis -vis the other nations, and these are uh, developed nations, which have uh, older populations. Uh, this is, frankly, advantage India. It uh, definitely means that uh, we have um, a youthful population, which is going to be able to innovate, which is going to be able to uh, create more jobs, uh, create more opportunities for growth and for overall well-being of, of the nation. Um, if you look at the extreme, which is Japan, which has an aging population, uh, there are lots of issues and the pressures that these that uh, an aging population has on an economy as well as on the nation is uh, is by far very very tough to manage, uh, which for us you know has been an advantage. Uh, in my college years, when I used to study a subject called foundation course, uh, we uh, used to study uh, you know the uh, advantages and disadvantages of population. And there was one point, and I'm sure Achal, I must have taught you as well in BCom, is where we look at uh, that uh, the population explosion uh, was frankly a disadvantageous position for us because it leaded to a lot of stress on economy. Few decades later, we have seen that the same population explosion today has been an advantageous position because we are not an aging country by far when we compare ourselves to the others. But this new population is very unique. Take a look at the next slide, and I'm sure a lot of you would relate to this. Uh, I still cringe when I see uh, tattered jeans. Uh, there is a lot of emphasis on uh, multi-screens. Unfortunately for us at schools and colleges, we have to have, adapt very quickly to these multi-screens. And thanks to these screens, are we even able to uh, engage in a lot of lectures and sessions like these for our students, but you are a very unique generation that is stepping out. 
uh, you are Gen Z, you're the generation after millennials. Uh, there is a lot of hope riding on you, and, uh, but you're very different uh, to, uh, to please when it comes to academics, when it comes to skills, or even when it comes to uh, what kind of jobs or uh, opportunities you should uh, take up post your uh, uh, you know, uh, standard undergrad and postgraduate programs. The next few slides that I'm going to focus on are on how you as Gen Z uh, should be looking at different course opportunities that are available for you. Uh, I told you a little story about myself when I started out that we had three check boxes and that's what we decided our course of action to be this is what we did so if we signed up for the sciences uh, you then became an engineer or you uh, took up architecture or uh, you know you got into uh, medicine so these were popular outcomes of the science programs that are uh, that we opted out uh, when we took uh, science courses uh, we'll stay on the previous slide. Uh, we uh, then, if you took at uh, look at uh, commerce, uh, we had a BCom, and then of course uh, you either opted to do a chartered accountancy, which meant uh, long hours, uh, beards for boys, and lots of sleepless nights for all students. And then you probably, if not CA, you took uh, up uh, CS, which is uh, company secretary. These were outcomes that were best suited uh, for BCom programs. And the third option was the Bachelor of Arts, which is BA. And uh, BA it was something that was associated, which now we very fashionably call humanities and liberal arts, but it is a course for uh, you know, students who wanted to probably pursue careers in uh, journalism or uh, some level of media and uh, areas like these. Of course, these are generalizations. Uh, you know, there were lots of other permutation combinations, but these were popular outcomes of the courses that came around. Uh, when I finished my uh, graduation and post-graduation, I opted to, uh, I always uh, aimed to get into the field of human resources because uh, that's what I thought was the best fit after my uh, master's program in uh, human resources as well. But uh, destiny uh, plays a very important role as well, uh, along with, of course, the hard work that we put in. Uh, and I got into uh, HR college with a teaching profile. And uh, this was what was supposed to be a short term uh, interaction uh, of teaching uh, with, for students because of a faculty uh, gap, uh, ended up being something that I have not looked back on. Uh, and it's been 17 years today. So, uh, you know, uh, the elements of training, learning, what I picked up in an HR program or human resource program is what I put into focus within my uh, teaching learning programs that are available uh, that I teach. This also brought about a lot of uh, new courses in the form of, uh, you know, BMS, which is management studies, uh, BAF, accounting and finance, mass media, banking insurance, uh, financial markets, uh, then there was insurance, risk management, and other vocational courses in tourism and uh, even travel. And uh, these became great avenues for uh, students to also choose their career paths. But uh, every course or you know, every program has, uh, has some element of limited shelf life. And because we are such a huge population and also we're looking at great skill sets that need to be re, uh, realigned from time to time, uh, these courses also have come with a little bit of an expiry, the expiration date uh, where we need to either update on ourselves on the skill sets that are available or we need to look out for new avenues to uh, pick up skills as well. So what's the world looking at? And I think that's what we should imbibe in within our, uh, our Indian curriculums as well. So we have something known as the STEM courses. <clears throat> you may have heard of this uh, from your uh, cousins or any relatives who are uh, abroad. It's very, very popular where you're looking at science, technology, engineering, and maths. 
Uh, we do have a lot of uh, focus of STEM in school level uh, courses. And I'm sure you do each one of these elements today in your school as well. But the emphasis needs to also come around from your uh, higher education point of view, which becomes an important aspect of choosing the courses. This also is largely steering towards your sciences, as you could tell, and uh, that is become a popular avenue too. But like I mentioned earlier, we need to keep looking at newer avenues, and therefore the next, uh, you know, in the uh, next ad addition to STEM was what was known as STEAM. STEAM is arts. So uh, the humanities and the liberal arts is something that is one of the most sought after programs. So students who have done programs in liberal arts and humanity courses are very well uh, uh, you know, accepted by leading multinationals as well as uh, other institutions for your further studies in, um, in uh, masters. The thing about arts or humanities and liberal arts is that it gives you a different bent of mind to thinking. Okay, so it's not just uh, painting and drawing. It's got a lot of element of what is known as, uh, you know, bringing in the combination of left and right brain thinking. And that's where it becomes very, very important. The next element that uh, gets added though, and that is where the world is today, is what's known as STEAM. So we, uh, the addition of entrepreneurship and design. Entrepreneurship is of course important because it brings about elements of uh, uh, you know, job creation, which is the need of the hour, especially for our country. And we've seen some great success stories of entrepreneurial ventures around us, whether it's the flip cards or it is OYO rooms and what have you. Uh, there are, of course, some stories which have not done so well, but even from there, there has been a learning. So failure is an important aspect of uh, learning as well, and that becomes uh, very key in the entrepreneurial journey. And then is the combination of design. Uh, you know, someone uh, very rightly long ago told me that moving forward, every uh, bus business would need to have design sense uh, and every design may not necessarily have business sense okay so uh, this when we talk about design we're looking at something what's as a concept known as design thinking uh, and i really do encourage each one of you to look that up it's bringing about uh, empathy in uh, in its uh, in in uh, in problems in day to day problems or bringing about empathy to in solutions that are being offered in your various aspects that there are. And this combination of STEAM, which is the sciences, technology, uh, arts, management, entrepreneurship, and design is frankly one of the best packaged individual that organizations uh, or even your uh, sole proprietorships would uh, really benefit out of. Uh, these courses are also elements which are going to enable you to pick up the right amount of skills that are needed for any, uh, for any individual to uh, work further, further. So if you have moved and decided about, uh, you know, what are the elements of courses that you want to choose and uh, you choose your STEM, STEAM or STEAMed elements, you then move on to what is are deciding which college or what college should I go and pick up these courses out of. Uh, I am a hardcore, uh, passionate, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, advocate of undergraduate education in India. And I say this uh, with a lot of confidence, uh, having been in this field of education for a few years now, that uh, the undergrad education, whether it is your vanilla courses of BA, BCom, BA, or any of the other specializations as well, they definitely give you good foundational knowledge, which is necessary for you to then develop on for your masters or specializations. So uh, a good, uh, you know, maybe some uh, good, good idea is that you do a good undergrad education in India, and if at all you want to take an international uh, education moving forward, 
you could then look at probably international opportunities later on. Uh, there are, of course, the academic sense, which means you're uh, far more, uh, a little more mature to understand how the academic, uh, you know, rigor of the international universities work. And the second part is the social uh, impact because you are mature enough to understand the exposure and the options that are available to you, be it even as basic as freedom uh, that there is of being in, uh, in an institution or an, uh, an university out of your home country. In India, you'd be surprised to know that the education infrastructure is huge. It's massive. Uh, we have a, over 864 universities and we have a, over 50,000 colleges that there are across the country. Uh, and you've seen it in the news. Uh, they are, uh, with these kind of numbers, they're still uh, very, you know, confidently and striving hard to even uh, look at examinations, which are now probably not going to happen. Uh, or also look at how performances would be rated for students who are also at the threshold of uh, their third year and between a job or a master's uh, you know, opportunity for them. But these, this is the kind of options that you have in this country itself. And uh, believe you me, there is an option for each one of you. So whether you're looking at uh, you know, an option with STEM courses, STEAM courses or STEAMed courses, there are 51,000 and counting uh, colleges which are uh, going to be catering to these needs very, very successfully. And it's all over the country. So take a look at uh, these options as you, are, as you start thinking of as well. But I think what's most important for you uh, at this stage is also looking at career opportunities. Uh, what should be my career opportunity? I got into teaching really, really by default. And like I told you that I wanted to be in human resources. I never thought I'll be a teacher. I never thought I'll be a professor teaching older kids. It was not something that I'd really, really planned. But I think with God's grace and uh, with a lot of mentorship from, uh, you know, uh, from the right people, I have managed to uh, carve out a niche for myself within this particular education sector as well. But there's, of course, lots more to achieve. Uh, when you look at careers, you look at inspiration around you. So it could be your mom and dad. It could be uh, a relative whom you're close to. It could be a sibling. It could be anybody. And that's where our inspiration points really, really start off, especially in the earlier years. Uh, I'm a ma young mom to uh, young kids. And uh, you know, uh, they're twin girls who are all of seven. And uh, every time I ask them, so what do you want to be when you grow up? Someday it's a teacher, someday it's a doctor, someday it's a pilot. And I'm sure this is a story that resonates with each one of you as well. And uh, you would definitely remember, right? When you wanted to be a fireman or you wanted to be a doctor or a vet and so on. And some of you may have also thought of being teachers because teachers are the first point of inspiration uh, that really, really, uh, you know, gets you connected, uh, especially in your earlier, your early years of uh, schooling and academics. Uh, but where you are today is also an option to look at what are the career paths that are available ahead. So let's take a look at uh, what the jo job landscape is. Uh, you know, as we sit, of course, yes, there is, uh, there is, uh, you know, the the feeling of. Uh, of uh, uncertainty and that uh, what are the jobs there? Are there jobs? Will the jobs remain and what have you? But the World Economic Forum, which really comes out with a lot of interesting research uh, and has come around with these top 10 emerging areas of landscape of jobs for uh, over the next two years or so. Uh, and look at some of these. Uh, data analytics, right? I'm sure each one of you have a social media account, whether it's Facebook or it's Instagram or Snapchat and what have you. Uh, and, and you see a lot of ads when you're scrolling up and down your account as well. There's somebody who's watching what you're looking, what you're searching, what you're Googling, even what you're talking. And um, that is all being captured 
and there is a lot of analysis and mapping that takes place to understand how consumer behavior can be then triggered into the right spaces by marketing companies or even organizations who are uh, you know probably looking at capturing more uh, market share the other part is ai and machine learning which is artificial intelligence and machine learning there's a lot of debate that's going around that will jobs be replaced by uh, you know by robots uh, will uh, uh, will teachers be replaced so uh, you know and i i'm sure a lot of my teacher colleagues who are probably listening in to me would relate to this when we uh, got in computerization into the classroom there was initially a lot of resistance for sure in our lives as to uh, you know the the chalk and the talk method seemed to be much better versus what we are using today and thank god for technology and machine learning and analytics and all of this that we are even at least able to connect with our students uh, even if it's on a virtual platform like this and able to engage with them and definitely they need the teacher to do the basics of teaching and uh, hand holding in there there's going to be a lot of uh, you know opportunities for also sales and marketing professionals uh, yes travel may be hit a little bit uh, because of the uh, of the situation that we are in but uh, you know this is where frankly the best opportunities for growth are all about so as you will grow older or even when you have some discussions around you you'll have a lot of people who will say oh but sales is not something that we want to do we don't want to you know we don't want to pitch we don't want to market but if you start from that lower level of uh, you know growing your journey or starting out your journey through a sales profile and then move up uh, you know you will see that a lot of learning really comes about into your growth pro uh, prospects as you move up in the organizational ladder uh, of course digital and uh, you know new technology and it services are something that will always always be important and relevant and uh, there is going to be great options for jobs in there uh, if you look at the current decade 2020 there are uh, jobs that have uh, we can move to the next slide uh, the uh, the jobs that have uh, you know really really uh, been top notch uh, have been from the as aspects of hospitality temp staffing uh, e-commerce your amazons zomatos your swiggies your all of these are very key play, uh, area players of the job landscape but this was uh, what we call as uh, before corona or bc okay and uh, these were some of the opportunities that are available a lot of it has been impacted and we'd see that in the next slide uh, which have changed in the in the elements of uh, during corona and after corona so dc and ac uh, aviation i'm sure uh, each one of us are going to think about uh, before we get on to that next flight uh, but uh, you know before that we know that what it, what uh, covid has done to the entire travel and aviation industry there are job cuts there are people who have been told to sit at home so your aspiration which could have been a pilot and if you had become one uh, you probably would currently not be looking at any opportunities in that particular sector per se uh, real estate is also going to be hit uh you know especially for projects that were ongoing a lot of these are uh, worked upon by migrant workers and uh, we know the story of migrant workers and the tr and the challenges that they are facing currently as well uh e-commerce is something that uh, of course uh, has thankfully uh, come into our, come to our rescue uh, especially for tier 1 and tier 2 cities uh, like for example i'll tell you for mumbai you know there are lots of areas which have had complete lockdown or they become containment zones and uh, that means they're not able to even step out for their daily or uh, for their essential items and look how wonderfully even the e-commerce uh, companies responded to this particular challenge uh, you have um, you know amazon you have swiggy of zomato which was uh, you know basically for food delivery here is uh, now offering you 
groceries and essential items and that's where they have uh, converted this into an opportunity and thank god for that because uh, there are jobs that have been salvaged uh, because of the, uh, the corona times that there are uh, but when we see the next slide at least thankfully we have uh, you know some element of uh, skills that we need to really really work towards on so yes the world is going to be very very different uh, whether the lockdown ends on 17th may or extends or goes up to june nobody knows there's a lot of speculation yes but i think this is the best time to focus on the top skills that you should be developing and building upon i'd encourage each one of you to start working on something known as the personal portfolio so uh, work on that personal portfolio personal personal portfolio could mean the skill sets in the form of short term courses that you could pick up there are lots of them online coursera and all of these are giving it uh, you know free of cost and you can do uh, as basic as excel to uh, even moving into maybe uh, graphic designing or auto automated car designing whatever be your interest there's lots that's available in here uh, to use this time effectively uh, means also getting ready for the skill sets of the decade so uh, you see 10 skills on your screen right here you are uh, looking at uh, you know uh, complex problem solving skills i mean imagine how important it is in a situation like this right this is a very very complex situation uh nobody knew of uh, of any pandemic like this uh, ever hit in our lives i don't think we had ever anticipated and uh to problems like these this is also where you would use a lot of design thinking bringing in elements of empathy bringing in elements of uh, you know uh working with a lot of different types of teams and people um, i mean uh, if you see the news with your parents you will see that uh, a lot of politics over uh, this particular issue has frankly been uh, pushed under the carpet yes there are some you know issues that keep coming up in now but a lot of uh, different parties their ideologies may be different but they come together and they are working towards uh, solving this issue to the best possible manner uh people management is a very very important skill set that you must must focus on uh, whether you are a manager whether you will be uh, your own boss uh, whether you will work for somebody whatever be it you will be working with lots of people and that's what we call as interpersonal skills and the ability to work with different people different skill sets of people different backgrounds of people becomes very very important for you to pick up as a strong skill per se uh you'll see also uh, a lot of iq which your schools and a lot of things that you do academically demonstrates but what's also very important is your emotional quotient or your eq uh the softer skills or or the elements of working with people empathetically is something that is also an important aspect and please use this time uh, very effectively uh, to work towards as well it could be as basic as doing a a task at home right so uh it could be just making your own bed it could be just cleaning up your own plate uh, so that these are small elements which go a long way in uh, for in you handling situations as well Uh, as well as working uh, through situations in an empathetic manner and of course uh, your uh, you know ability to work with different people in creative solutions uh, coming up with uh, a lot of uh, new ways of doing it so you hear this phrase very often think outside the box but i always add to this uh, do not forget the box okay and think over this statement and you will figure what i'm trying to tell you uh, on on aspects like this so you millennials you z uh, gen z's what are uh, these are of course the top 10 skills that uh, the world economic forum has uh, identified but what is it that really you should be uh, focusing on as uh, you know as uh, gen z's is the skills of the 21st uh, century 
Uh, these are elements that you definitely hear a lot about. But uh, when I talked to you earlier about building your personal portfolio, please ensure that you kind of work towards keeping this toolkit handy. One is your uh, personal presentation skills. The way you dress, the way you groom, the way you speak, the way you talk, uh, the way you interact with people is very, very important. And I'm sure you've heard of this before. First impressions really, really go a long way. So, uh, you know, get yourselves. Uh, there are you know, lots of courses even right now which you could do on grooming and etiquette. Pick those up. Uh, be an effective team player. Very, very important. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's really uh, very odd. In your early school years, you will be told to uh, do your homework. You know, you'll be uh, graded, you'll be ranked, you'll be uh, encouraged to do, uh, to do better than somebody else. And then when you come into the real world of uh, work, of uh, interaction with uh, industry and, and so on, you'll be then asked to be a team player. How do I develop team playing skills? It could just be a basic sport that you could pick up right now. So there are lots of team, sp uh, team sports and I'm sure you know I'm a cricket fan, so I love cricket and you could work towards picking up that as an aspect as well. Uh, handle yourself better. You know, I'm, I've come across a lot of young adults who have uh, anger management issues. And this is not something that would be really well accepted in the world outside. So yes, you may not always be, uh, you know, uh, your opinions may not always be uh, taken into consideration. You may feel you are being shortchanged, but that does not mean you have a burst of emotions. You need to handle yourself better. You need to handle yourself with confidence. Uh, you need to be uh, very, very effective personally. And these are some of the aspects that would be developed through a, a, skills, a skill set of the 21st century. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of Indra Nui. And uh, let's hear from her what she talks about the skill sets that an individual must come, come across with. Um. I've always talked about my five C's model, and let me talk about them again. The first is competency. I think anybody who wants to be a future leader should have a hip pocket skill. That everybody looks at and says, XYZ is the go-to person for that skill. Because unless you're really known for something, and not just as a generalist, you don't stand out from the pack. But in order to be competent at something, you've got to be a lifelong student, because you've got to constantly refine your knowledge of that subject so that you remain ahead and abreast of everything that goes on in that field first. The second I'd say is courage and confidence. It's a pair. Um, you can be very, very competent, but if you're not willing to speak out, if you're not willing to have the confidence based on your knowledge, what's the point? Right? You just roll over. So courage and confidence are very important. The third is communication skills. You cannot overinvest in communication skills, written and oral communications, because as a leader, you constantly have to mobilize the troops. I can tell you when I first came to the United States, I used to debate. The fourth skill I'd say is consistency. It's important that leaders are consistent. You can change your mind, but change your mind against a consistent framework, because if you're not consistent, people are always second guessing what you're doing. So be consistent. And the last skill is your compass. Integrity is critical in this job. You can be competent, you can be courageous, have confidence, be a great communicator, be consistent. But if you don't have integrity, if that compass doesn't point true north, everything comes crashing down as we've seen in recent times. So again, it's the 5C model, and that's what I've operated against for all my life. I hope you keep that in mind and uh, you know really, really uh, work towards it as you move on uh, with, with your career plans. Uh, what we have done at uh, you know, the institutions that I represent is we've embedded these 21st century skills uh, into our programs itself. So I'm going to very quickly introduce uh, the institutions I represent. Uh, we are part of uh, five institutions in Mumbai. We're at Lower Perel. For those of you who may have come, we are uh, diagonally across uh, Smash or uh, what's known as the Phoenix Mill. So that is where uh, we are. 
and we started out in 2013 with the design school which has got uh, you know four years undergraduate programs if you're looking at career opportunities in communication design uh, product design interiors uh, these are some of the program fashion design these are some of the programs that we have we then launched the school of management and entrepreneurship which is uh, what we have uh, blended the management and the entrepreneurship uh, program within uh, within our undergrad and postgraduate programs and we also have an aict approved pg program we also of course have a communication school and uh, this is uh, very well suited for students who are looking at media and advertising. And the new ageness is that we've got uh, a lot of emphasis on social media marketing and digital marketing, which is where the careers today are. Uh, we have the Hospitality and Culinary Arts School. This was formerly located at Labasa, uh, which is the little off Pune. And we've now completely moved the operations. We've bought, taken it over and moved the operations within our premises. And it's got a great option for students who are looking at leadership roles in the hospitality space. And very recently, because of course it's Bombay and you know there's Bollywood and there's lots of movies and, and all of that, uh, we've now launched last year the Entertainment Arts School. Uh, which has undergraduate programs in film production and 3D animation. And this has a cur curriculum collaboration with the Vancouver Film School, which is one of the best in here. So this looks at the different programs at the undergrad and postgraduate opportunities. Uh, you're most welcome to come around and visit us the next time you're here in, um, uh, you know, in Mumbai. Uh, what may interest you currently, uh, especially since you are in a lockdown phase, is our summer school. And I'll be happy to uh, share this information with uh, Principal uh, Bhavika, ma'am. This is a 60 hours module. We have just started the session today. So if any of you are interested, you can still enroll for and join with us for tomorrow. We've got an immersive experience in leadership, in uh, you know, storytelling, in finance, entrepreneurship, and media. And this is a good certificate module for you to do. And the dates, of course, are up on your slide. Uh, finally, I think I'm just going to leave you uh, with a few thoughts, uh, which has always, always held me in good stead. Uh, these are pointers, which I hope you don't file preachy, but you enjoy uh, and absorb uh, as you move along with your career opportunities. And uh, these are 10 basic uh, essentials that you should always, always uh, remember. And uh, this is, of course, whenever we go back to school, and I'm sure we will uh, go back in the physical spaces. But in the current format, the online is uh, doing quite well. Uh, we're very happy to engage, and I say this across academics whom I meet, including your principal and others, is remember, uh, stay organized. You know, very, very important. Uh, don't procrastinate. Don't put that for another day. Uh, I, that's a generational problem. I always say this, uh, that you always say, I'll do it later. But sometimes that later is too late. Uh, go to class, whether it's online or offline, but go to class. Uh, you know, read up, study, talk to your teachers, uh, you know, build up your skills of uh, being confident, uh, being staying focused. Uh, but I think the last two aspects are really, really, which are very important is keep your feet on the ground because that's what makes you soar higher in life. So humility is your first skill set that you must, must focus no matter what academic scores you may walk out with, but if you don't walk out with humility and value integration, you're frankly uh, not somebody who people would want to associate with beyond a point. And lastly, be yourself. Don't give in to peer pressure. Uh, don't give in to uh, what the world is, uh, is, is doing or pressurizing you to do. Uh, you know, think it through and then figure out what should be your career path that you should choose for you. So uh, yes, with this, thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm so delighted to uh, connect with you all through this platform. And I'll hand it over to Kanaya. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. You have given your best by sharing your experience and knowledge in every way possible to motivate our students. 
So for what of time? Uh, this thing, if at all, I think uh, there are a few questions like uh, if I can address uh, what measures in high school would ensure skill based learning? That's one question that has been come up. So, uh, madam, what measures in high school would ensure skill based learning? Okay. So, uh, you know, I think uh, it is a combination of, uh, you know, the academics that are being provided by the school that you are in. And I think today, because the world is a smaller place, it doesn't uh, matter where you are studying. You could be in, uh, you know, in, uh, in a city, you could be in a town. Uh, what's important is what are the skills that you should pick up through the, you know, through the 21st century skills that I focused on. And uh, I think even today, schools are far more uh, quickly adapting to the 21st century skills requirement because we realize it, right? That you give them opportunities to be a part of MUNs, uh, you are uh, participating in debates in, uh, you know, in your annual day. So a lot of these participative activities definitely enable you to uh, develop the skills at the school level. Great, uh, thank you, uh, thank you, madam. So, any anyone from the uh, uh, attendance, if you have any questions, you can put it on the chat, or uh, we can hand over to Akshar. Or any uh, Bhavika, you have any question? Sushar, you have any questions so that we can go ahead? So, over to you, Akshar. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Hello everyone, myself, Mr. Akshat, Master Akshat Kantilal Chopra, studying in grade 8 at Senior Zip National School, is here to present a vote of thanks to Mrs. Mrs. Meena Desai, ma'am, as ma'am, you have, you have given your best by sharing your experience and knowledge in every way to motivate our students. You have motivated us all by being a living example of wisdom and service towards the nation. I would also like to thank our chairman, Dr. Sandipan Reddy, sir, principal, Mrs. Bhavika Shah, ma'am, and our coordinator, Mr. Tushar Joshi, sir, for arranging this wonderful Synergy Talk session with our honorable guest, Mrs. Meena, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So great, uh, it, it was wonderful uh, listening to you and I really, uh, really see uh, the entire skills, like, 20, like job markets are not going to be there. So it, it is a known norm now because post COVID, it is going to be how uh, it, the scenario is going to change. And uh, we at Synergy would always love to ensure that we skill uh, students from rural parts. So we are, we are a small, uh, Rural school, but uh, we have a very great bunch of, of enthusiastic students there. So they learn a lot. Uh, they they are doing a lot of activities uh, in in the lockdown period also. They completed, and um, we just wanted to uh, give them the exposure of the world that is coming in. By I think sir's connection has lost. The new word STEM is really a good uh, thing. Uh, S T E A M. Good one. So uh, thank you everyone for uh, participating. Uh, so madam, I just want to ask you. Uh, sure. about, uh, we we started synergy talks, and you have yes. seen what you do. So your few words about this activity in the rural part of Maharashtra. Sure. 
So I uh, definitely, you know, I've been uh, following uh, what has been happening through the Synergy Talks. I know you had uh, a, a celebrity, then you also had, uh, you know, uh, multiple faceted prof uh, professionals. And that's, I think, very, very uh, interesting. And the need of the hour, A, of course, I say that, uh, you know, thanks to technology, we are uh, connected. And this is the best platform of uh, the students getting to interact with uh, different uh, different personalities like you have lined up. So it's a great uh, you know opportunity for them. And uh, I think this is also great options for them to see what uh, what are what lies ahead, uh, especially through the times that they are going to go through because uh, these are unique times. They are going to be growing up in very different uh, situations, uh, unlike uh, the others. So I think uh, Synergy Talks is a fantastic platform for keeping this uh, engagement going. So all the best. And I'm so delighted to be here as well. So thank you. I hope I was able to add some value. Yes, yes. Thank you.